Hello, everyone. You, too, can have a podcast. You have a passionate voice. You want to be heard. You can be inspiration to others. And it is super easy. You all know that I am not technical. So just download the Anchor app on your phone or go to anchor.fm and get started sharing your voice and inspiring the world. Hello, I'm Kendra Von Esch, and you are listening to my 10-minute daily podcast, Reality Reflections. I bought into what this world said would make me happy. Money, prestige, power, and hey, if it feels good, do it, because life is stressful, so party hard. Do whatever makes you happy. But that didn't quite work out, because I felt even more insecure, full of fear, shame, and anxiety, and never, ever good enough. Then God found me and flipped my reality upside down and transformed my life. And I want this for everyone. So I left my executive career to help others find true acceptance, supernatural peace, joy, and love that only comes from a relationship with God. Here is my reality reflection for today. Today we learn a lot about doing things with love. Kind of the opposite of just saying, well, if I don't break any of the Ten Commandments, I'm going to go to heaven. I'm going to read the readings because they really ring true. And we have to remember that no matter what we do, St. Paul said this, no matter what we do, if we don't do it with love, if we don't say anything with love, if we don't listen with loving ears and a loving heart, everything that we do is just going to be a banging gong, noise, activity, hustle bustle. Doesn't mean anything if we don't have love. This is part of the two greatest commandments. Let's check it out, shall we? All right, I'm going to read both readings. I'm going to read the because they're pretty short. Reading number one, Galatians 5, 1 through 6. Brothers and sisters, for freedom, Christ set us free. So stand firm and do not submit against to, whoop, darn it. Rewind. Brothers and sisters, for freedom, Christ set us free. So stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. It is I, Paul, who am telling you that if you have yourself circumcised, Christ will be no benefit to you. Once again, I declare to every man who has himself circumcised that he is bound to observe the entire law. You are separated from Christ. You who are trying to be justified by the law, you have fallen from grace. For through the Spirit, by faith, we await the hope of righteousness. For in Christ, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision counts for anything, but only faith working through love. Isn't it funny where you hear the faith versus works? We cannot have faith in Jesus and not respond. Excuse me, I'm clearing my throat because I don't have my other app open right now to mute it. That's the deal. Everything with love, but faith working through love. We are supposed to respond. We are supposed to react to the encounter of Jesus Christ. We are supposed to build that relationship. We are supposed to love him and love others. It's not about the law. (laughs) Yes. What what St. Paul's basically trying to do is he's saying, look, there's 600 and something. I think it's 613 laws. I got to look that up. But any (laughs) 600 and something is way too many. And the Jews said, well, hey, you have to live by these laws in order to be saved. So that's basically what Paul's saying is it's not about the law. It's about the love 
and our faith and the spirit within us working our salvation out through trembling here on earth. So we get out of that slavery of sin. We don't fall back into it. Okay, let's do the gospel. Luke eleven thirty seven through 41. After Jesus had spoken, a Pharisees invited him to dine at his home. He entered and reclined at the table to eat. The Pharisee was amazed to see that he did not observe the prescribed washing before the meal. The Lord said to him, Oh, you Pharisees, although you cleanse the outside of the cup and the dish, inside you are filled with plunder and evil. You fools! Did not the maker of the outside also make the inside? <clears throat> Excuse me. But as to what is within, give alms and behold, everything will be clean for you. Okay. It's what comes out of us that defiles us. It's not what we put into our bodies. It's not the law. It's us loving. I remember in the drink, God is love, 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 love. I didn't know that love. I didn't. Yes, I felt that love in my experience and being away from reconciliation for 26 years. I had a mystical sense of God. I did have this joy, this spirit within me that kind of never left. But I, but that love and my love for other people and looking at people and just loving them was definitely something that grew for me. And it came within the same time that I was trying to be a better person, asking God into my heart. So instead of looking at someone and judging someone, I noticed that I was looking at someone and wondering, what is God going to do with that person? I know I always reference the, the people that have their pants halfway down their butts and their underwear is sticking out and all that kind of stuff. Well, that was, that used to be me. I used to judge those people immediately and think, what a punk. That kid's going to be no good to society. So there's a big difference between a loving heart that actually impacts our world view. If your world view, if you are not seeing the world through the eyes of Christ, then we got to ask for it. I don't want God to be like, hey, you did all this stuff, but you just did it because you were supposed to. I want God to be, you did all this stuff because you love me. I mentioned the other day, sometimes we say, for the love of God, that's a phrase for a reason. We should be doing things for the love of God, but we've made it into some sort of, you know, phrase that we say when we're mad at someone or we want someone to do something for the love of God, do this or shut up or whatever the case may be. Hopefully you're not telling anyone to shut up. I don't, <laughs> but you know, that's what people do. They throw the, for the love of God in there or for Pete's sake or for Christ's sake, which is not good, but that's the point. Sayings are for a reason. We should be doing things for love. That goes for forgiveness. How many of you out there are still holding resentment for someone? It's time. It's time to start praying for them, meaning willing them, wishing them, praying good for them no matter what, whether you feel it or not, whether you find yourself being hypocritical or not. That's how forgiveness starts. We ask, first of all, we take it <laughs> to reconciliation because God won't forgive us if we won't forgive others. So we give our resentment up to Jesus in reconciliation and then we let it go. We start praying for those people, even though we still have bad feelings toward them, even though we're still angry or hurt, betrayed. God will do the rest. 
God will change your heart. And one day you'll be praying for that person. And all of the sudden you'll actually mean it. Or you'll see these people and you'll realize they are human. Or maybe they're not even apologizing. Maybe they could care less. Maybe your relationship has completely gone to the wayside. They moved to another side of the country. You don't even know where they are. You haven't talked to them in decades, but you're still mad. You're still upset. What we have to do is look at people and know that they are broken too. All I have to do is look back in my life and say, wow, all of the amazing graces and blessings, transformation in my life has been beyond my belief. I was more broken. I was shattered into a thousand little pieces. Kind of like what we need to do to the CIA if you listen to JFK. Sorry. That was his quote. But I was broken. You're broken. We're all still, I'm still broken. I'm not put back together. And I break myself. (laughs) I bust myself up into pieces because of my own stupidity and my own selfish desires and impulses and stuff. But it's all about love. So we're going to stop. We're going to pray. We're going to ask the Lord to fill us with his love, to change our hearts. No more do we not want to do things because it's a commandment. It's a rule. We want to do things for the love of God. There's a huge difference. Huge. So let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, come Holy Spirit. We need transformation. If we are to be the Christ's that you want us to be, his feet, his hands, his tongue here on earth. Lord, we need some help. We need our hearts to be Jesus's heart. Mary, please, with the Holy Spirit, pour out grace into our lives. Being the mediatrix of grace, we are begging. We beseech you with Jesus and your beloved spouse to change us. We know we need a more loving heart for ourselves and for us to love others. We know that we need a loving heart to listen, to speak, to think. Every thought that we have, we want it pure, pure with Jesus's heart. Lord, you are love. We know you love us. We feel your love. We want to radiate your love. Go use us as a conduit. Pour your love down into our bodies, our souls, our minds, so that it can radiate through us to everyone you put in our path today. Help us do at least one act selflessly, For the love of you today, Lord. One selfless, loving act for you. We ask for you to possess us. Come fill us to the brim, to the top with your spirit. Mary, grab our left hand. Holy Spirit, grab our right. Walk us through this day. Guardian angel, please protect us and lead us. Jesus, please heal us. We need your will to be done. We want to be your slaves who are in love with you, doing everything that you ask us and prompt us to do. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Be patient, everyone. Your heart will change. Your worldview will change. Your words, your thoughts, your deeds will match. We, with the
the power of Jesus can love the world to change. We have our spheres of influence. We have the people that he put in our life. That's where we focus. We don't need big, grandiose things. We need little acts of love in our families, in our workplace, in our spiritual lives, for sure. Ah, Lord, I am just amazed at what you have done in my life. And I just pray that you work in everyone that hears my voice right now. You work in their souls in a big way. Thank you yesterday, Lord, for having me actually feel my audience in that prayer. It was intense, y'all. I hung up, hung up, disc- <laughs> I ended the podcast yesterday and I was crying for another three, four, five minutes. I couldn't believe it. We're in this together. It's awesome, isn't it? <laughs> all right, everyone. I love you all. Go be love. Find something more with God, that love that you're needing in your heart. Have a blessed and inspired day.